you know, you talk about a bunch of PJs getting in fist fights to go. Like, no kidding. We, we've talked about it on podcasts before. It is a competition, whether it's yeah. you and me. Like, I want to get on that bird before you do. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's just reality because I want to go in there. And I mean, I've seen, you know, dudes that are, you know, there's only three deployment slots or something like that. And we got a team of 10 and it's like, no, dude, I, you're lucky. I'm not taking a freaking baton to your legs yeah. just to, to hurt you so that I get on that. <laughs> so it's not surprising well, I mean, you guys are getting fist yeah. fights. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it has been like, none of us came in to do this, you know, you know, the most part, none of us came in to do this, to sit around, you know? No. And, you know, you know, the guys, you know, reputation is everything to the guys and, you know, everybody wants to just prove themselves and everybody wants to have that opportunity. Um, and, uh, you know, while, you know, while the fire, you know, that fire, that internal fire is hot, man, like you can't ignore it, man. And, uh, yeah, man, you know, it's, yeah, it's all, it's all, you know, you just want to be in the game. Like, you know, nobody wants to sit on the sidelines. So yeah, it is what it is, man. Like, I, you know what, man, like, I, you know, I, I, I'm not ashamed to say it, man. Like I, I know some people look down on it and, because, you know, I'm a senior guy, you know, I should be, you know, let the young guys do that. But I fuck that, man. Like, you know, I only have so much time left, man. If I have an opportunity to go do something good, I'm going to go do it. Like, you know, those guys have, they have their whole career, you know? Yeah. That's how I look at it. And I, I know, I, you know, I admit, man, that may not be a good way to look at it, but like, I didn't come into the, I didn't come in to be a PJ to sit around and do nothing. So yep. it is what it is. I'm with you. And that's, that's actually one of the concerns, uh, you know, now that Afghanistan is not a thing, there's a, there's a lot of concern about folks that, Hey, I'm going to be sitting around and Hey, fear not. We always find uh, work and funny enough things in the world always tend to pop off, whether they're stateside or overseas. So if you think you're going to be sitting around doing nothing for very long, you're yeah, you're, right. You ain't going to be. So, yeah. um, so switch your gears a little bit. Uh, when you, I can't, I can't remember. So you'll have to forgive me. I can't remember if it was uh, what years you were an in-doc instructor, but uh, I would love to revisit your time there because when you were an instructor at in-doc, it was just PJs going through, right? Right, right, right. So uh, I got there in the summer of 08 and then left for the two, three in the summer of uh, 12. So I was there for that four years. Okay, so you spent four years as a in-doc instructor, just yep. wreaking havoc. Um, and for the, and <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say that because I can only imagine the pain train that uh, people were on. Because for anybody that doesn't know Ivan, um, he's he's probably right now the most physically fit chief that's out there. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. I, I don't know if you've recovered fully from your, from your, uh, was it shoulder or elbow surgery, but it was the elbow uh, surgery. Yeah. yeah. Elbow surgery. But like Ivan is known across the community for being extremely fit. So, um, what was that like at NDOC just putting people through the ringer? Uh, you know, um, it was a challenge, right? Like, you know, you like, you know, we have, we have guys that, you know, uh, that go down there to be instructors and, um, uh, they come to talk to me about it and, uh not to go on a not, not to go on a side tangent but like you know my advice to them and like you know i wish i which i learned the hard way is man you you got to go there and uh you just go there and do your job man uh you know people decide to be instructors for specific reasons whether it's spend more time with their family or you know go to school you know um or you know just get some time off from being in the operational run like you know if you can remember why you uh, consciously made the decision to to go there man, you'll be all right, right? Like if you don't let that job kind of eat you up because it's, it's, it's difficult, man. You got to deal with a lot of politics. You got to deal with AATC, uh, you know, that one of the unfortunate things uh, for us, not that it's an unfortunate thing, man, ATC, you know, is, is a, a great command and they do what they're supposed to do. But like, it's, it's you know how it is, man. It's difficult being uh, in the uh, aspect war community and then having, to, having the Air Force kind of run, you know, our who we are kind of, you know, deal like that. Uh, so, and you know, that doesn't go away, man. Like the politics are there, the being counters are there, uh, you know, and you know, your boss has a boss and their boss has a boss. So, you know, it is what, you know, but at the end of the day, man, you can't win. So it, it's, it's a, uh, it's a difficult cycle. So you got to kind of remember like what were, what were the main reasons why you decided to go down there to be an instructor? Uh, what if, even if it's, you know, to make, uh, you know, better operators. Right. And that was the thing is like, that's, that was my mentality. I wanted to go down there. And I wanted to ensure that, you know, man, like 
you know, we were given back to the community and, and the product that we were given the community was, you know, something special, right? Better than us. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a tough pill to swallow when uh, you're told that you can't do that. It's like, you know, you can't do what you feel is right. And sometimes, you know, what you think is right uh, isn't, isn't right. You know, there, there were a lot of occasions where, you know, I had to uh, take a step back and, and my leadership, you know, kind of had to slap my wrist. Uh, because you kind of lose yourself, man. It, it's difficult. It's really easy to lose yourself uh, in the moment when you're, you know, you're, you're trying to, uh, you're trying to get the best and the most out of an individual who's really at the end of the day, man, it's just some kid, right? It's just some kid that didn't know anything about hydration and couldn't run, you know? So it's, it's really easy to forget yourself, uh, but especially when you're passionate, man. So, and then uh, from there, man, it's difficult. It's really easy to take that, uh, that frustration home. So it could be a, it could be a really good four years, man, or it could be a very difficult four years. Uh, for me, I think it was a little, little bit of both. Um, but uh, I enjoyed it, man. Like I, you know, you know, there, you know, it's it's uh, it's a it is Groundhog's Day to a point. But I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you're there with a a great group of people. You know, you know, other instructors, man, and and it's you can keep it fun and uh, man. And I I think really where I saw uh, the benefits of my four years is like you know I went to the two three after Indoc and pretty much like ninety percent. 85% of the guys that were at red team were Jays that I put through uh, Indoc, right? They're young dudes. And then, and then going on that, that deployment in 2013, I deployed with three of those guys, three, you know, that I became very close with. And man, just like reading the sit reps, man, reading like, you know, what the, the teams they were supporting were saying about them, like seeing like what they're actually doing, the, you know, the numbers they were putting up, man, it was, it was uh, very fruitful, you know? And I remember, uh, I remember just being incredibly proud, um, you know, and telling my wife, man, like, you know, I, I'm sure she'll disagree, but for me, you know, those four years, that's where it really shined for me. Like, you know, seeing, uh, you know, my peers, my, you know, the, those, those young guys just, man, just, just tearing it up, man, and just doing the job and jobbing out, man. And, and that was, you know, because I, I, I truly believe it was because of, uh, you know, the, the selection process we put them through and, and the things they, you know, they, they, they dealt with, you know, going through selection in the pipeline, man, like it was a testament to all the instructors in the pipeline, uh, uh, you know, what the guys were doing down range. So it was awesome, man. Yeah. I mean, it's really important what the folks at the pipeline, and, and I'll just call it the pipeline now, uh, regardless of school you're at, whether it's at, you know, the prep course or, um, you know, ANS or pre-dive, scuba school, and all that kind of stuff. Like everything that they're doing is extremely important. It's and it's shaping the future of special tactics and the PJ community. So it's it's um man, it's it's important stuff. And yeah, you're right. It's Groundhog Day, and it's easy to get lost in it. Um, but everything you're doing is really important. Have you kept up with the changes in the in the pipeline? Uh, you know, a little bit. Um... You know, I, I am aware of, uh, you know, the new process. I'm actually going down there next week. Uh, in about two weeks, I'm heading down there. Me and a couple of the other squadron leaderships are going to go down there and observe, uh, you know, a portion of ANS. Um, so, yes, I guess. I, at this point, I, you know, it's hard difficult for me to say no. I don't know exactly everything. Um, and uh, But, I mean, I know for pretty much what's going on, yeah. Oh man, I'd love to get this out before you go down there. I, I won't be able to because we just we've got a line, but I'd love to have this out for because all those dudes that are going to ANS are just oh no. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, like you know, you know, you've had the conversation with uh, a lot of the guys, you know, uh, that you've had on the show. Um and uh you know, at the end of the day, man, like, you know, the guys that are down there, you know, you, I mean, you got a phenomenal wing commander, man, right now that, uh, man, I would, I would die for him. Like, and I, I love that man so much and I respect him so much. He's such a, a great leader. I, I got nothing, nothing but good things to say about him. Like, you know, you know, I went through AST with him and uh, <clears throat> instantly, man, it's incredibly charismatic and like, you know, truly cares about people, truly cares about the mission. Like, like I said, I got, I, I would die for that guy. Uh, you know, and then, you know, you got a group commander, man, that I, I, I helped put through phase two and I gave him the thumbs up, man. And, you know, he's, he's a firecracker and, uh, yes, he is. Like I, man, I, you know, it, 
you know, and the guy's, I mean, the guy's phenomenal, right, man? And he works his ass off. And uh, like, you know, regardless of whether, you know, I disagree with him, you know, which we do disagree a lot, but I mean, like, man, he, the guy's phenomenal, man. He works, you know, he cares and, you know, he only wants the best for, uh, you know, for the career field. Uh, you know, and I, I don't know who the squadron leadership is there, but I mean, I guess my point is like, you know, we have phenomenal leadership in place right now uh, that I trust, right? I trust uh, that, you know, they're, they're doing uh, what they believe is right, you know, to better the community. And not only that, you know, even more so you have, you know, the, the, the senior NCO leadership that we have there are guys that I love and respect, you know, um, you know, from the squadron to the group, to, I mean, to the wing. I mean, like, you know, you got three chiefs there now that I mean, are, are personal friends of mine and I respect the hell out of man. I would do anything for, um, and I, I, I trust that they're advising, you know, the commanders, uh, you know, and, and telling them, you know, giving them their advice and giving them hell when they disagree with them, you know, they, you know, that's their job. That's your job as a senior NCO is like to help guide your, you know, your commanders to help hopefully make the best decisions. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, like we, we have to, right. We've got to trust our brothers that are on the line man, that are in the trenches, like, you know, trying to build these products. Um, you know, uh, at the end of the day, man, like, you know, there's, there, you know, one of our guys was charged with creating this course, this new course for the community and, you know, uh, you know, mounts and uh, like, you know, I would not expect him to provide a product that would fail us. You know, he, he put his heart and soul into it and he gave, uh, you know, he did what he was supposed to do. Um, so, you know, I have no doubt that, you know, the product that's being uh, provided to the community isn't, isn't anything but stellar. Um, uh, you know, now, whether I feel like, you know, that's what's best for pararescue, uh, it's a whole different story. I'm not going to get on that soapbox, not on this, not on, you know, not on, uh, the internet, but, um, but at the end of the day, man, like, you know, the guys down there are, are phenomenal. They're phenomenal men, man, and doing great things. And, uh, I, I wouldn't expect anything less from them. Oh, right on. And I think that's fair. And I couldn't agree more with, you know, the, the current wing commander and chief and the group commander in chief, uh, those guys are awesome. So, yeah. um, and have been on the podcast at least a couple of them anyway so yeah. um so we we generally try and keep these at about 50 50 minutes to an hour so i'm gonna i'm gonna ask you now um that way i have it on record uh to get you back on the podcast because what i'd really like to do um is especially get you on after you revisit or not after you revisit but after you visit ans and see the pipeline just and you digest what you what you saw down there and just to give your opinion to kind of contrast and compare and i'd also like to deep dive into hurricane katrina again because uh -huh. like I, I could see your face light up um so i know that there's a lot of goodness in there and i think that it would be really cool to share uh with folks so i'm i'm gonna hold you to putting you on the pod having you on the podcast again at a later date, but one thing before we leave, and, and I know I've mentioned the car accident, I think I'm going to save that for another time. Um, but when we were texting about this, you had brought up, Hey, a really good question that Aaron had asked, uh, a oh, couple yeah, of guests, yeah, yeah. and I, and I want to ask you hmm. at what point in your career, um, and, and maybe it wasn't during Afghanistan, maybe it wasn't during Katrina, but at what point did you realize things like, Oh shit, this is real. Yeah, man, I, I thought that was a really cool question. I think uh, you asked, uh, it was Chad. You, you guys had asked Chad. Um, uh, and, uh, man, I, you know, like, and I was actually driving uh, downtown to pick up my wife's uh, Christmas gift when I was listening to the podcast. And I was like, it just got me thinking, man. Like, <clears throat> but I, you know, I, I think, I think most of everybody would have, like, you know, just that one defining moment. Like, and for me, you know, uh, it was like, I don't know the exact date, but it was, uh, it was at the end. It was like right before new year's, uh, to that. So it was December, 2001. Right. <clears throat> and, uh, I was, uh, attached to, uh, the QRF and, um, we had to, there was a, I think it was a, a blue team at the time that they were in some kind of engagement and we were called to just go in and pick up, uh, some of their wounded. And it was the very first mission that I was on. I was, you know, man, like uh, my team leader at the time was uh, this guy named D10. Uh, this, he's, he's such an awesome dude, man. But I mean, I, I just remember how fortunate I felt to like be with him, at, you know. And either way, 
you know, we landed the, you know, we're like coming in, man. And you can see off the, off the ramp, man, there's like tracers, like, you know, and it wasn't anything crazy, man, but you know, you could see sporadic tracers and stuff like that. And, and on comms, you could hear that the, uh, the team was, uh, actually in a active tick, you know, and the, you know, how the 53 just blows up, you know, like so much dust, man, especially over there. So I just remember like coming in, man, and at that point you, you just can't see anything. Every once in a while you can see a tracer like fly by, but I mean, it's like brown out. And, you know, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna lie, man, I was terrified. Like, you know, first of all, I'm, I'm scared. Like, you can't see anything, so I hope we don't crash, right? Um, so I just remember, oh, man, I'm just like hugging the ground. And um, we, we, you know, we, we settle down, the bird settles down. And I just remember Lewis like turns and looks at me and he, he just literally, like we're on knots, he just, and he's yelling. He just looks at me, he's like, hey, man, no matter what happens, just stay behind. Me. And I'm, you know, I'm like, okay. And like, and that was it, man. <laughs> He, he literally jumps off the ramp and starts moving out, dude. Right. I, I don't even know how he knew like what direction to go in. Like, you know, I was like, I just didn't know anything. And he just took off running and I just remember, okay. So I, I jump off the ramp and I'm just like running on, and I'm just trying to stay with him and I'm just trying to like stay right behind him. And I just remember, you know, once again, you can see like inverted tracers going off and I'm just like, you know, in my mind, like, holy crap, you know, this is actually happening. Right. But then I just remember I focused on Lewis and he was like, you know, he was just like, like it was nothing. Like he was just moving out like it was nothing. You know, he's just moving to the gym. He was just working. He was just working. And I just remember like be, kind of being like everything stopped for me. And I was kind of in awe at that moment. Like I'm just like looking at this guy. I'm just like, holy crap, man. Like, like, you know, I'm wondering if he's being affected by like the surroundings the way I am. And then it, but at the same time, I was like, but it, it didn't seem like it, right? Like so much is going through my head. But I'm just like, I'm just seeing him from behind. But I just remember, like, like I said, he was just, like, you know, the switch turned on from him and he was just moving out and just working. And I was like, holy crap, man, that is awesome. You know, like it was awesome, you know? And then, and that was it. That was it for me. I was like, just, I mean, the switch just turned on. It was like, go to work, you know? And so, you know, from there, we just, you know, I mean, you can imagine what happened. We just picked up our patients, packaged, like got it, got it back on the bird, man. And then, you know, just, you know, headed out. But I mean, dude, it was, it was such a surreal moment for me. It was really the first moment I was like, man, like, like that's what you're supposed to do, right? You're, you know what you're supposed to do and you just do it right no matter you know no matter what's going on around you, you just go to work so yeah man that that's when it that was like you know that's really when it hit me i know the kind of kind of dude you're you're talking i don't know him but th that kind of person that you see in a an ex extreme situation like that or even in a benign situation and it's it's the same, it's the same professionalism, it's the same work ethic, it's the same just um, tone. It's like, I'm here to do work, I'm gonna do work to the best of my ability and then move on, that's that's all it is. Yeah. Which yeah. that is what, you know, Air Force Special Warfare, that is what uh, other SOCOM entities, you know, the NSW and USASOC and MARSOC and stuff, like that is what we try and breed. Um, and I, dude, that, uh, I, I love it, even though, you know, you're not going to detail like that type of person is who we're looking for. And, and it's rare that you're that type of person, your first encounter, your first stressful situation like that. But as soon as you get that, you know, that first one out of the way and you yeah. debrief with yourself and you realize what, what you need to do, like the rest is gravy. It's good. <laughs> yeah yeah man once you know once you you flip that switch on the first time man like like it's automatic after that right man you, yep. just, you just go to work dude yeah exactly